Our final honoree is often referred to as a tour de force. Anna DeVere Smith is an actress, playwright, teacher, and author. Her most recent play and film, Notes from the Field, looks at the vulnerability of youth, inequality, the criminal justice system, and contemporary activism. The New York Times named the stage version of Notes from the Field among the best theater in 2016, and Time Magazine named it one of the top 10 plays of the year. Ms. Smith is the founding director of the Institute on the Arts and Civic Dialogue here at NYU, where she is also a professor at the Tisch School of the Arts. I think Anna DeVere Smith is one of the best character actors of our time. Think about Anna's character's portrayals. Gloria on Showtime's Nurse Jackie, Alicia on ABC's Blackish, and as, yes, mm -hmm. and as a national security advisor on NBC's The West Wing. Anna's also the star of Shonda Rhimes' new hit series, For the People. She has starred in films such as The American President, Philadelphia, Dave, Rent, and The Human Stain. For her body of work, Anna DeVere Smith was awarded by President Obama with the National Endowment for the Humanities Medal. Simply put, Anna DeVere Smith is a national treasure. Please take a look at the screen for our video interview with Anna. You know, I didn't do, for example, I didn't do anything, um, I didn't do a slew of interviews after September 11th. Uh, I didn't do a slew of interviews before and after the um, Obama presidency, and I would call those really historic moments. My plays have to do usually with much smaller moments than, than those really large, epic moments in American history. Everything starts with questions. It's a question that I have about something, and then a series of questions that I ask people, and then I build the project out of the answers I get. Please welcome 2018 McSilver honoree, Anna DeVere Smith. Well, when I, I got the word that President Hamilton was interested in uh, engaging us across the university in an interdisciplinary way, around poverty, I immediately rich, reached out across from the Tisch School of the Arts to you. And uh, I haven't even been to your office to visit you. We just talked on the phone, and then you're nice enough to have me here tonight. So right. thank you, thank you very much. And from what we're seeing here, you're not only a great leader uh, and a Morehouse man, um, <laughs> you're a curator. Because look at these extraordinary people. You know, starting with the prodigy all the way to the preacher. So it's, it's just a, <laughs> it's a beautiful night. And uh, I, my latest play is about the school to prison pipeline. And uh, I, I just want to uh, read you something. I'm not going to act. I'm just going to read you something that I learned. I did 250 interviews. When I write plays, I interview a lot of people, and then I make one-person shows. Uh, Notes from the Field is on HBO. We're taking it to London next week. And uh, so I did 250 interviews in four geographic areas, presumably about the school to prison pipeline. And I, I learned many, many things. And I just want you to meet this one person who's a judge in Philadelphia. And uh, when we arrived in his office, he was extremely prepared. And he took out a folder. And he had three photographs that he wanted to show us. And one was of a young man. It was a person he had recently sentenced. And one was a picture of him when he was like five years old, this innocent individual. And then it goes all the way up through his life until the, what he looked like by the time he's sentenced. And you just see this innocence get taken away and taken away and taken away and taken away. And I want to share with you some of the the, the just uh, uh, Judge Anders's words. He said, I thought the best experience, you can hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. 
I thought the best experience would be to show you, uh, just look at the first page. So she shows the picture of the young boy. This is a young man that I sentenced um, a few years ago. And he's, you know, kind of sweet looking, perhaps a little scared boy. You have to imagine this, because I can't show the real pictures. Uh, not allowed. A uh, little scared boy. You turn the next, no, I think he's 13 in this page. The reverends talk about your imagination, you gotta use it now. 13 in this page. Turn the next page, he's 15, a little older now. And if you take and flip through a couple of these pages, you'll see where he ends up at age 20. I want y'all to just imagine that, at age 20. And before sentencing, this is part of the sentencing memorandum that the district attorney's office provided me. I can't tell you how profoundly it impacted me. This is a judge talking. How did this happen to our child? It's still impacting me. It's a kid that will never leave my conscience. He's still incarcerated. He grew up in the system. For a, ch a child in the youth system, he actually did quite well under juvenile supervision. And sometime around the age of 18, things went completely off the track. He has, in addition to those tattoos, he has tattoos all over his face in that in case. You, if, maybe you imagine that when he's 20, tattoos all over his face. In addition to those tattoos, as evidenced by this sheet, he has his fingers. He has tattoos, live by the trigger, die by the trigger. And these are his triggers. It's very appalling, I think, statement about our system. This is a kid who I believe from the age of five was involved in the Department of Human Services. His mother was a drug addict. And if you can imagine all the judges that he saw over a period of time from when he's five to the age of 20. And what I said to him during the sentencing was, I said, the systems failed you. We as a society failed you. At some point, you know, we didn't meet our responsibility to provide you with a safe, a safe environment, an education, all the things that you need, we failed you. But at a certain point, when you turn 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20, you failed society because you went out and committed crimes, at, which you've pled guilty to. You possessed a gun illegally, burglarized a home. And I'll sentence you for those. But I didn't want to sentence him without some recognition that in my view, I think society failed him. And I think that meant a lot to him. And at that point, this judge burst out crying in front of us. And so what my experience trekking on the school to prison pipeline has taught me is it's absolutely unfair to call it the school to prison pipeline. It is, as you have said earlier today, a poverty to prison pipeline. And if we want schools to be the intervention that we thought they could be, say back during Brown versus Board of Ed, then we're gonna have to reconceive of what they are. They're gonna have to be centers where people can come, not just for learning, but for mental health, for feeding, for all of the things, anti-violence work, all the things we have talked about right here, for learning the story and their stories. And you know, this to me is what's particularly inspiring and exciting about the McSilver Institute at this moment in our history. And Dr. Silver, you're absolutely right. We need research. The systems are broken. We need research, we need new ideas, and I want to thank you for even...